From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Now at 4.30, an arrest has been made in the tragic mass shooting over the weekend. What we know about the teen suspect and how family and friends are remembering the victims. And a new strain of COVID-19 has made its way to the U.S. Why experts say this version of the virus could be tougher to fight. And after months of no-shows, the Indianapolis Chamber Orchestra is returning to the stage. How you can enjoy it safely with a live show this weekend. Happy Tuesday, and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Indiana. I'm Megan Shin. And I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is standing by with a check of our forecast for this Tuesday. Todd, and as I was driving into work, it was almost like a mist coming down yeah. outside. You know, that's what it is here this morning. It's patchy drizzle. It's a little bit of a mist and a little bit of reduced visibility. All the significant precipitation has made its way out of the area, so you don't have to worry about that. And temperatures, for the most part, are above freezing, so that's good news. Here's a live look at... Uh, WRTV storm team radar with the clouds on as well and you can see uh, the clouds are in place that mist and drizzle though so light that the radar can't really pick it up so there is more out there than what it looks like uh, on radar significant snow here across parts of the Chicago area this morning uh, so if your travel plans take you to the north uh, you will run into some issues this is not a blank camera you look really really closely here and you can see just a few lights especially right above uh, the time and temperature there uh, but it just shows you how locked in with the clouds we are uh, this morning. Temperatures obviously very key when we're dealing with precipitation. Yesterday during the afternoon hours we got above a freezing. Everybody's above freezing right now with the exception of Peru. You were right at the freezing mark at 32 degrees and we still do have winter weather advisories posted across the northern portion of the state so be aware of that but overall with the exception of a few slick spots mainly on secondary roads I'm not expecting too many issues for the morning commute here as we work our way throughout the morning. Some showers, uh, some drizzle and temperatures that will be climbing into the mid to upper 30s later on this afternoon. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now at your commute. This is I-65 and 21st Street. You can see traffic there is pretty quiet traveling up to speed. We do have those wet roads out there this morning, so just use caution. But the good news is things, as Todd had mentioned, are warmer here around Indianapolis, so it shouldn't be too slick. Of course, we'll continue to keep a close eye on those roads and let you know if there are any trouble spots you should avoid. Well, we are learning this morning more more about the 17 year old suspect arrested in that mass shooting tragedy on Adams Street. Lauren, the team was taken into custody Monday morning. He is accused of killing six people, including a pregnant woman, her unborn child, and members of his own family. Information shared with WRTV Investigates revealed that the suspect opened fire because he was going to get in trouble for leaving his home without permission. The victims include his parents, siblings, and the pregnant woman, whose relationship to the family is unclear at this time. Time. One of his teenage brothers survived after getting shot and ran to a neighbor for help. Medics drove him to the hospital in critical condition. Police say they are not looking for any other suspects at this time. Formal charges have not been filed yet, Lauren. And again, the victims have been identified as 42-year-old Kezi Childs, 42-year-old Raymond Childs, 19-year-old Kara Hawkins and her unborn child, 18-year-old Elijah Childs, and 13-year-old Rita Childs, who was a student at Indianapolis Public Schools. Some family and friends gathered at the scene of that attack on Monday afternoon to pay their respects. India Hammond and Anastasia Dittman say they knew Kezi Childs since high school. She was just a wonderful woman, wonderful mother, um, soon to be grandmother. She was just, even the family, everyone was just great. I've been heartbroken since I heard it because this doesn't make sense. It's senseless. They're good people. I don't know why this took place. I don't know what led to it. I, I'm very sure people are going to assume whatever it is that they want to assume. But the bottom line is they didn't deserve this. They were good people. I know her heart. I know how she was raised. She was a good person. Hammond says that she spoke uh, to the surviving son in the child's family, and she says he and others are trying their best to cope as best as they can. Now, right now, we have all the latest developments on this mass shooting. It's up right now on WRTV.com and the WRTV mobile app. Of course, we'll continue to post updates as we learn more in the coming days, Megan. Lauren, thank you. Some encouraging news for Indiana in the battle against COVID-19. Health officials are reporting fewer cases and the lowest number 
number of related hospitalizations in two months. The State Department of Health says 2,210 more Hoosiers have been diagnosed with the virus. 12 more people have also died. More than 613,000 total cases have been reported since the pandemic began. Indiana's dashboard shows that 2,045 Hoosiers were hospitalized with COVID-19 on Sunday. That's the lowest number since November 6th. Well, a new mass vaccination clinic in Fishers is up and running this morning. On the first day open, it gave out about 300 people their COVID-19 vaccines. Now, this is located at the former Marsh Supermarket near East 116th Street and Brook School Road. It has space to administer more than 1,600 doses of the Moderna vaccine per day. But that's not happening yet because there's not enough supply. Currently, the state is allocating 1,000 doses a week to the site. It's important to be as ready as possible for um, vaccinating as many people as we can. The goal is to get those shots in arms um, as soon as they arrive. So that's um, that's what we're now well positioned to do. I want to get through this onto the next year and be able to spend some more time with your family and friends and um, more activities and get back to what we all consider a normal life. A reminder, you can register for a vaccine by going to ourshot.in.gov or by calling 211. And remember, supply is limited, so you're not guaranteed to get an appointment. Health officials recommend checking the website frequently. Vice President Kamala Harris is set to receive her second dose of the COVID vaccine today. She was given her first shot live on national television in late December. The vice president will get her second Moderna vaccination at the National Institute of Health. Harris is urging Americans to get vaccinated and said it is quick, safe and relatively painless. One vaccine developer has announced it is ending its trials. The company Merck is calling for calling it quits after, quote, disappointing results on two of its potential vaccine studies. Company officials say they will instead focus on two possible treatments for that virus and that have not been approved by regulators yet. Right now, only two vaccines are authorized by the FDA for emergency use in the U.S. Those are Moderna and Pfizer. Well, the coronavirus variant originally discovered in Brazil has now been found here in the United States. Health officials have confirmed the first appearance of the mutation in Minnesota. The person recently returned from a trip to Brazil and lives in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. The Minnesota Health Department says the person got sick during the first week of January. Unlike variants found in the UK and South Africa, they are believed to spread more quickly. The CDC says that this strain from Brazil may be tougher for antibodies to fight. Lauren, if you feel comfortable getting out of the house and taking in a show, there's an opportunity this weekend. The Indianapolis Chamber Orchestra returns to the big stage on Saturday. You can watch the performance live at Klaus Memorial Hall or virtually at a later date. For those attending in person, several COVID safety precautions will be in place. We'll be socially distanced. The audience and the musicians will be masked, the audience and the musicians. And um, we'll have a touchless entry as well. So a digital program, digital tickets, just to reduce any sort of touch point. Very exciting. Woodwind and brass musicians cannot play their instruments with masks on, so they will have plexiglass shields up around them. Capacity will be limited to less than 10%. The show starts at 7.30 Saturday evening. It's called Happy Birthday Mozart, and it is a celebration of the groundbreaking composer. For more information, go to WRTV.com and click on this story. And today, lawmakers moving forward with former President Trump's historic impeachment. Coming up, why this trial will be different than the last. And a warning for people who have the new iPhone 12, why Apple is advising you keep that device and some of its accessories away from pacemakers. And as we go throughout the course of the morning, we'll be dealing with clouds and a little bit of patchy drizzle across parts of central Indiana. But the good news is all the significant precipitation is out of the area. We'll break it all down for you coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV. with wholesome, delicious Triscuit. Welcome back. Today, the Senate is moving forward in the next big step in former President Trump's second impeachment trial. Lauren, it's a historic trial, the first of a former president in American history. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. Overnight, a historic march across the Capitol. Members of the Senate, 
I announce the presence of the managers on the part of the House of Representatives. The House delivering the article of impeachment to the Senate. It triggers the start of the second impeachment trial against former President Donald Trump. President Trump gravely endangered the security of the United States and its institutions of government. Donald John Trump thus warrants impeachment and trial. Lead House impeachment manager, Congressman Jamie Raskin, reading that single article of impeachment from the same chamber of violent mob storm nearly three weeks ago. Charging Trump with incitement of insurrection and demanding that he be held accountable for his words. Fight like hell. Democrats plan to argue this rally was part of a larger effort to subvert and obstruct the results of the 2020 election. He has not demonstrated remorse. He has not even acknowledged his role in the events of January 6th. And he has never disavowed the lies that were fed to the American people by him about who actually won the election. Both sides will have two weeks to prepare their case. The trial begins the week of February 8th. And overnight, President Biden told CNN he believes the trial has to happen, but he casts doubt on whether Democrats will have the support of the minimum 17 Republicans needed to convict. Already, a growing number say since Trump is out of office, the trial should be tossed out too. To Senator convict. Tom Cotton telling Fox. This is beyond the constitutional authority of the Senate to conduct a trial to convict and remove from office a man who left office last week. The Constitution says the chief justice presides over the impeachment trial of a president. But since Donald Trump is no longer in office, Senator Patrick Leahy, the Senate's longest serving Democrat, will oversee the proceedings. He's promised to be impartial. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. At 444, President Biden's press secretary says the Treasury Department is taking steps to resume the effort started by the Obama administration, changing the face of the $20 bill. Harriet Tubman, the famed abolitionist that led slaves through the Underground Railroad, would replace former President Andrew Jackson. Tubman would become the first woman to be on a modern U.S. paper bill. A timeline on when we can expect Tubman on the $20 bill will be announced after the Treasury Department finalizes the redesign. New information this morning about a tour bus crash that left one dead and dozens injured near the Grand Canyon. The woman who died has been identified as 53-year-old Shelley Ann Voges of Boonville, Indiana, just outside of Evansville. More than 40 people were on the bus Friday night on the way to Grand Canyon West. Three people suffered critical injuries and 40 others have since been released from the Arizona hospital. The company running the tour, Comedy on Deck, has not released a response yet. An investigation into the crash is ongoing, Lauren. And a major snowstorm making its way across the Midwest at this hour. And here's a look in Nebraska, which has been hit especially hard. Omaha issued a snow emergency into the overnight hours after they saw more than a foot of snow. The same snowstorm is now stretching through Iowa and Chicago. And let's take a live look in the Windy City. You can just see the snow covering the roads and continuing to fall this morning. Nearly 170 flights have been canceled at Chicago Air airports, O'Hare and Midway. The National Weather Service says depending on the snowfall totals today, this could be a historic storm for the Midwest. So I want to bring it back home, Todd. We're just a little bit south of <laughs> Chicago and right now it's raining here in central Indiana. Yeah, you know, potentially the biggest snow of the year for Chicago uh, here today, depending on what their or final totals will be. Uh, I don't know which view you prefer, the one of the snow there or the one behind me where we're locked in with the fog and you really can't see much of anything outside of right now uh, as you look across the downtown town Indianapolis the current temperature that's at 33 degrees and uh, that is key because it's a degree above freezing not much above freezing uh, but it is enough to prevent us from getting uh, super icy out there this morning and the temperature should hold steady if not climb uh, here throughout the morning hours the humidity though 100 percent and that's why we are locked in with some visibility issues across uh, parts of the area no dense fog advisory the lowest visibilities are actually down to the south in the Bedford and Seymour area where we're below one mile uh, the rest to central Indiana not dealing with visibility quite as bad. As far as your temperatures go, almost everybody is at or above freezing. There's a few locations right at freezing here to the north, one degree below freezing in Richmond. So there's definitely the potential for some slick spots out there, especially in those northern locations. I think the main roads that have been treated uh, would be probably just fine, uh, but some of the secondary roads, bridges and overpasses, uh, just be aware of that uh, this morning as you get going. Now temperatures today will slow 
slowly climb throughout the morning hours and by this afternoon we should top off for your high today right around the noon and one o'clock hour and then we'll slowly start to fall once again as we start to bring in uh, some colder air that's going to be in place as we work our way into the next couple days. The rain and snow as well to our north as Lauren mentioned there's some drizzle outside some mist and that's really just about it. It's so light that radar doesn't pick it up but here is that snow in Chicago and it stretches all the way back into part of Iowa here this morning, uh, but that is heading in a northerly direction. Temperatures today in the Bedford area will top off very close to 41, 42 degrees. Same for Seymour, a little cooler as you work your way uh, to the north. This is uh, 3 30 in the afternoon, Richmond at 38 degrees. And then as we continue into the overnight hours, we do tomorrow morning uh, get below freezing. And so tomorrow morning, depending on how much moisture is around, uh, there definitely could be a few slick spots out there. 26 the overnight low in Indy. 28 in Columbus and then for the day tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies. There'll be a few snow showers that sneak in here tomorrow afternoon, uh, just mainly though in southern locations. Any snowfall totals though would be very minor Thursday and Friday. Pretty nice and then potentially another wintry mix possible as we head into the weekend. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's plan out your drive this Tuesday. Here's a live look right now at I-70 and Sherman Drive. We're over on the east side of town where you can see the wet roads, but everything's traveling up to speed. I think visibility in this spot it should be OK down there on the road. So we'll continue to monitor that and let you know if there are any trouble spots you need to avoid, Megan. Lauren, thank you. Apple is warning customers about a new issue with its iPhone 12. It says its newest smartphone could interfere with certain medical devices, including pacemakers. The notice published on Apple's support page warns users about magnets inside all four iPhone 12 models, as well as the MagSafe charging accessories. Apple recommends keeping the products more than six inches away from medical devices or more than 15 when you are wirelessly charging. Something else to be aware of, the MagSafe charging charger can damage magnetic strips or RFID chips. So avoid placing credit cards, passports or key fobs between your phone and the MagSafe charger, Lauren. All right, good to know. Well, for the first time in decades, Budweiser will not air a commercial during the Super Bowl. Instead of the classic Clydesdale ads, the money would have gone towards in that commercial spot. It's being used to support awareness about the COVID vaccines. That's giving more than $5 million to the Ad Council for the project. Other companies like Bank of America, Google and Verizon have also donated. The Ad Council is developing its campaign to help those who are hesitant about getting the vaccine. This is all new and we're really going to lean into that with empathy, remind people of the moments that they miss and love and then really drive them to get more information, get their questions answered. So when it is their turn, when we do have the supply, people are ready to go. Well, they also plan to reach people through community leaders, influencers, and just trying to get that information out. Budweiser did roll out this online ad over the weekend, highlighting people who are coping with COVID and healthcare workers. The company says it's a plan not to advertise during the Super Bowl, but it's not long term. Megan. Well, Lauren, the Colts aren't wasting any time organizing their coaching staff for next season. They picked Marcus Brady as a new offensive coordinator less than a week after former coordinator Nick Sirianni left the job in Phil for Philadelphia. And Brady is not new to the team. He has spent three years with the Colts, two of which were quarterbacks coach. Well, we've all seen the Bernie Sanders memes on social media. Now you can buy a recreation of this internet obsession, how you can get the viral crochet version just after the break. And as Indiana expands the effort to get Hoosiers vaccinated, many are calling for teachers to be bumped up on the list. New at five, why some groups are saying it's important teachers are next. That's right after the break. RTV. Welcome back. It is 455 on your Tuesday. Here's a live look at your commute over on the east side. I-465 and East Washington Street. You can see traffic there is traveling smoothly in all directions. No delays or crashes out there on the roads to slow you down at this early hour. So we know Bernie Sanders and his choice of mittens have really just taken over the internet since inauguration day, Megan. It's trending everywhere and now you can get the crochet version yourself. Photos of this design by Toby King also went viral. Now this doll depicts the Vermont Senator in a sensible brown jacket and the now notorious mittens. King is now capitalizing on the trend by auctioning off her crochet creation. All proceeds will support Meals on Wheels. And right now the top bid for the doll is around $16,000. Ooh, Todd, Whoa. maybe, uh, I don't know. 
Yeah. You could get a lot of mittens for that. Yeah, you're not going <laughs> to see me in those, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> for a good cause. Uh, for a good cause. For a good cause. I, uh, <laughs> that, that's the nice part about it. All right, outside right now, temperatures are above freezing in most locations. So that is uh, the good news. And we get up to 38 this afternoon. There's some patchy drizzle and some patchy fog this morning, but nothing that's uh, substantial enough, I think, that's going to cause big issues on the roadways. A few snow showers tomorrow. Again, just a minor deal for us and then pretty quiet for Thursday and Friday before another storm system heads our way for the weekend. The time now is 4.56. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on WRTV. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes.